Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you a crazy chess miniature played by English chess master and writer William Norwood Potter. Potter was a pretty strong player. In 1875 he even played a match against Johannes Zuckertort himself, scoring 2 wins and 4 losses with 8 draws. But this game was played long time ago before that match. This game was played in 1868 in London against a chess player whose name is Matthews. Let's see what happened on the board. Potter opened up with e4 and Matthews responded with e5, d4, he takes d4, c3. White goes for this hyper-aggressive Danish gambit, where white is sacrificing a pawn or two in order to rapidly develop his pieces and launch an attack. In here black has two main choices, can either accept the offered pawn by capturing on c3 or can play d5, but in our game we have a strange looking c5 move. If you wish I can even call this a dubious move, that will actually be a very precise evaluation of the move. Knight f3 by Mr. Potter and d6, another strange move, playing knight c6, developing the piece or playing actively like d5 is better, but in our game we have d6, here comes bishop c4, knight c6, white castles, king side and d3. Black wants to keep the c pawn on c3, thus somewhat making problematic for white to finding a good square for his knight, but all in all this move can't make any problems for white. Here we have rook e1 and after bishop g4 we have e5. As black king is still stuck in the center of the board and still black hasn't solved the development of his king side pieces, white wants to open up the e file and target black king. And it was in here that Matthews made a terrible mistake and captured on e5 with a knight. This taps into a brilliant combination and actually knight takes e5 loses on the spot. Instead it was better to play d takes e5 if h3 then bishop takes f3 and if queen takes f3 then knight f6. Black is doing ok, no problem at all, but in our game we have knight takes e5. And as we have reached the critical position, you can pause the video and try to find that winning move for white. Or some of you maybe even managed to find the winning move in a blink of a second, right? And that move is an absolutely thrilling knight takes e5. Yes, the knight was pinned, but it jumped. It jumped, thus offering the queen. In here all black could do was to accept the queen sacrifice. This is move 9, right? This is move 9 and we have a queen sacrifice. What's going on, guys? But let's see how is white going to finish up black king. Bishop b5 check, king e7. And this time the second bishop is joining the attack. Bishop g5 check, f6. The steps into checkmate in 2. Those old guys really loved to get checkmated beautifully, you know? Instead of playing f6, it was better to play king e6, though this is also losing. After knight takes d3, discover check king f5. Well, if you play king d5, then you can get checkmated after knight f4. Truly an artistic checkmate, right guys? So after knight d3, discover check, you should play king f5, but once black is losing his queen and rook takes d1, white is simply a piece up and this end game is an easy win. Let's go back, but in our game after bishop g5 check, we have f6 and knight g6 double check. The only safe square for black king is on f7, king f7 was played, after which we have knight takes h8 checkmate. How do you like this checkmate, guys? A very rare scene, right? But for those who are watching my videos constantly, I'm sure that you have seen the game played by Paul Morphy against Charles Le Carpentier in New Orleans in 1849. In that game also, Morphy managed to checkmate opponent's king on f7 by capturing the rook on a8. The final mating line looked very similar and I have to tell you this is a very rare scene to see such a checkmate in chess. Knight takes a8, what a move, how do you like this craziness guys? Matthews played the game terribly, made so many dubious moves, but on the other hand, the final combination by William Potter was simply fantastic. In the end, before I will wish you good luck, let's also solve a chess puzzle. Please take a look at this position and try to find the mating line for white. 
There is a mate in three and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you, feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video. Good luck!